Kendrick. Uh, I'm a musculoskeletal physiotherapist and the developer of Dynamic Tape. Uh, we're often asked how Dynamic Tape differs to, to Kinesio tapes, uh, and there's a lot of confusion uh, out there surrounding the, the purpose of Dynamic Tape. So I'll just very quickly explain to you where Dynamic Tape came from and how we generally uh, use the tape. So my background, I've worked uh, extensively in uh, elite sport, particularly with uh, with tennis, worked with uh, former world number four Greg Rosetsky, US Open finalist, and Greg had uh, a number of issues, and we had to sort of basically, uh, myself along with uh, some others, uh, you know, Pat Cash, Brad Langenbad, Mark Reed, uh, Melinda Glanister, Stan Grunemeld, and, and some others, rebuilt his game to, to reduce the amount of load that was going through his body. And I'll come back to that in just a second. Uh, the other part of my career was working extensively with cricketers in, in, in England uh, as part of the uh, physiotherapy team at Essex County Cricket Club. And in those two sports particularly, we see a lot of overload or overuse type of injuries. So our running injuries, our patella tendons, our sore, sore shins, uh, our throwing injuries, our uh, subacromial sort of pain syndromes, our shoulder impingement syndromes, uh, and that sort of thing. And so we were often trying to manage the load that was going through uh, through these athletes' bodies. So you know, tissues don't fail because of pain; they fail because of load. And we wanted to manage that load. And we did that in various ways. So we might have uh, ensured that they had adequate recovery time in between bouts of load, in between training sessions, for example. We changed their equipment. Uh, you know, maybe we changed the grip size, um, the balance in the racket, or or uh, the weight of their cricket bat, for example. Uh, we may have changed their training environment, so instead of running hills, then maybe they run flats, so on and so forth. So there was a number of ways that we could do it, and one of the big ways that we do it was look at their the way they move. Can we get them moving in a more efficient way, both for uh, performance as well as for, for injury management and injury prevention. And there's a lot of good research out there correlating uh, you know, some of the, the biomechanics and some of the kinematics. Um, with those other aspects of performance and injuries. And so we were trying to, to tie those things together. There's also some very good uh, evidence with uh, taping mechanically, using rigid athletic tape particularly, to try and modify movement patterns. And that's you know, shown to be effective, looking at 3D kinematics, looking at uh, EMG activity, muscle activity, uh, and so on. And then also showing clinical improvement. So, we, we would often be doing that and the problem we would, we would run into is that often when we tape them with these rigid tapes, uh, they were too restricted for what they needed to do and they'd come back and say, look, I just can't get into that position that I need to get into. The second thing that it didn't allow us to do was to actively or directly absorb load. So we could change loading by changing the way they were moving, maybe improving the, the mechanical efficiency of the system. So for example, uh, changing their foot position is going to change the lever arms of our tibialis posterior, you know, and so on. Maybe by maintaining that navicular up a little more elevated, we require less work of tibialis anterior, tibialis posterior, etc., to, to decelerate or to re-supinate through that foot. So we could get some indirect change. What we couldn't do was actually uh, directly absorb the load, particularly without changing movement patterns. So a lot of athletes uh, don't want to change the way they're moving. Their, their technique is what's made them successful, uh, but they're still breaking down through overload. And we want to have something that we could apply externally to do some of that load absorption to reduce the amount of load that was going through the system. So they were our two main aims. We wanted to have something that could modify movement uh, mechanically, so something that could pull the body one way or another, but without any restriction at all so they could continue to, to move through these complex uh, ranges of motion and um, techniques that were required for those, those athletic pursuits. The second thing we wanted to do was not necessarily change the movement, but have something that would provide the deceleration force for them and then the spring back. Uh, if you think of a thrower you know, throwing a ball, we wanted something that we could actually uh, place on so as they actually come through, through, through into their follow through, we've got something that's actually decelerating the arm, decelerating the trunk rotation, providing some of that force generation to decelerate the body and therefore we're going to get a less in intrinsic demands on our, on our muscles and the capsule muscular tendons unit etc.
So when we look at the tape, it's been designed specifically for that purpose. So it stretches in all directions so we don't lock movement up at all. So very stretchy in all directions so that we don't lock movement up. And importantly, it stretches a long way, has strong recoil, and it doesn't have a rigid end point to it. So it will just keep, more or less, just keep stretching and stretching. Uh, and what that allows us to do is place it on the body part with the muscle in a short position so that as the muscle lengthens, the tape also lengthens and provides that tension and that deceleration, that resistance to movement, and then spring back the other way to assist as well as they transition back into short. And most of, or a lot of the time we're using it is to aid that eccentric contraction, that deceleration, so as in that example through the follow-through. We might also go the other way now for us who get problems in their late stage cocking and we can bring it around and wrap it through the front. So as they wind up, we're decelerating in their late cocking and transitioning them back into early acceleration. What it also does is helps to improve the, the timing of the, uh, the arm coming forward relative to the trunk so they don't end up with a, uh, an excessive delay, an excessive lag, um, which is then going to overload their shoulder. So the tape is basically like a bungee cord. It goes on in that short position, like your bungee rope. You don't want to have a, a long rope when you jump off a bridge. You want a nice short one, so it's going to absorb load, decelerate motion, recoil back up. Okay, so short position. If we take an example of say a, a hamstring muscle tear, we'd have it on with a knee inflection, so that as the leg swings through, the tape's going to be resisting. It's going to provide some of that deceleration force. Uh, therefore, we have less eccentric demand on the hamstring. Okay, so. Often the forces that we, we require aren't great either. Um, you know, we just need to, to take some of the load, if you like, or just to provide some of the force. Uh, we look at some of the work by Vleeming on the sacroiliac joint, for example. Uh, you know, they show that compression using a, a belt, you know, sacral mutation was, was reduced by about 20%. Uh, with a force you know, comparable to tying a pair of shoes up. So we're not talking about large forces that are necessarily required. What we do need to be able to do is, is get good purchase on the lever uh, so that we take up that soft tissue tension, we have good purchase on the limb, we maximise our leverage effect and we have a correct position and line of pull so that as the movement occurs, the tension in the tape is going to decelerate that motion and therefore reduce the intrinsic demands on the body. Okay, so we use it in a number of ways. The first is, uh, very simply, to mimic the action of that particular muscle, to try and do some of the work, uh, to take the work away, as I said, a muscle tear, a hamstring, for example. If we provide some of the deceleration force, hamstring doesn't have to work quite so hard, less load going through there. And the same maybe goes for some of our tendinopathies and things like that as well. Okay, we're generally trying to reduce the activity in that muscular tendinous unit to reduce load. So if we can take some of the load that would otherwise have to go through there, the muscular tendinous unit doesn't have to do so much. So if we have it, say, over the quadriceps, straight down the front of the knee, uh, similar to what we can see in this example through here, okay, uh, that's not designed to make the person spring up and touch the roof. Okay. It's designed that when they're lowering down, it's starting to come back up. As they lower down, this is going to tension and it supports some of their weight. So it reduces uh, the amount of work that the quadriceps have to do eccentrically. So it takes some of that load off that muscular tendon unit. So say for a patellar tendinopathy or a muscle tear. So we're trying to reduce the action activity in that muscle. And we're seeing preliminary research now coming out supporting that. Things like, for example, taping uh, across the cervical spine or across the shoulder girdle in elevation so that when the shoulders drop down, the tape is lengthening and giving us a force vector back up to carry some of the weight of the shoulders. Uh, and there's some preliminary work being done on that, which is showing that after 48 hours of tape, we have uh, less activity going on, significantly less activity in our upper trapezius muscles, for example, in some um, office-related or work-related uh, neck disorders. Okay, so it shows that we can reduce the activity in muscle by taking the load uh, that would otherwise the muscles would have to deal with. Okay, uh, the second way that we can affect the work of muscle is actually to improve the work of muscle, but we're not looking at doing it through a, uh, the input into the skin and the facilitation, some of those kinesio concepts, where there is some um, ambiguity and some contradiction in some of the research as to whether you know, going one way affects the uh, facilitates or inhibits, and, and in whether in a clinical condition is the same as in an uh, asymptomatic person or so on. What we're trying to do is modify the mechanics to improve the system. 
or the setup so that the muscles can work better. For example, if I have somebody with a, a very downwardly rotated scapula, their muscles are at length, their, their lower trapezius and so on, they're elongated, so they have, you know, in terms of their length tension relationship, they have poor capacity to get that ratcheting of those actinomycin crosslinks together, so it's harder to generate force. That's that mechanical insufficiency that we talk about. So what we will do is actually use the force in the tape to A, take some weight of the arm, and B, bring them back into some upper rotation and retraction. In doing so, we're shortening up those muscles that were the target muscles, okay, and improving the length tension relationship so that they can then activate uh, their muscles or generate more force actively themselves. So we're not, it's not a neurological facilitation, it's a positional thing. We're improving the position so that they can then they can have an improved length tension relationship they can switch that muscle on better themselves, okay? What we've also done is taken some of the weight of the arm so that they have less resistance to overcome, so they don't have to work as hard uh, and they're in a better position to work. So hopefully they then fatigue, you know, uh, less easily and then they can maintain that uh, position far longer, okay? So the first way is we're copying the action of the muscle. The second is we're putting the body, we're using the force of the tape to, to improve the setup so that the muscles can activate better. So one way we're, we're actually reducing activity, second way we're increasing it, but we're still increasing it by actually uh, mechanically improving the position, okay? Uh, and we do a lot of that sort of uh, change in position for functional things, you know, people who have had strokes, for example, who say may not be able to get their hand out or, or externally rotate or supinate and so on, and we can use the tape the recoil and the tape to give them an active assist in that sense. So it becomes, um, you know, some of our finger things as well. It's almost like a dynamic splint in that regard. So we can use the, the um, tape to resist them going into the, the undesirable position and to actually give them a bit of an assist. It might just be enough to make them anti-gravity or make them functional, okay? Again, uh, we're looking at that from a, a mechanical assist using this strong recoil of the tape rather than a, a facilitation as such. And in order to do that, again, we have to put that, the tape on in that shortened position. So as we stretch, it's going to be decelerating or resisting, so it's helping the eccentric action. It's all then preloaded, so that the tape or the uh, energy in the tape is being stored as elastic potential energy. And as they come back up, it's going to actually give us an active assist uh, to some extent coming back up, especially at slow velocities. Okay? At fast velocities like throwing and things, uh, you know, I mentioned the one here coming around earlier. Once we start coming through very quickly, uh, the speed of the arm, the torque, or the, the speed of rotation is going to be far greater than the ability of the tape to shorten. So basically the arm will overtake the tape as it's shortening. If we're on the back, however, it would be decelerating and the tape's going to be stretching further, faster than the musculotendinous unit. So it's going to give us some of that deceleration. Okay, so uh, basically, the other ways that we use it will be to affect uh, mechanically, once again, some of our rotations, our glides, our joint orientation, so some of our mulligan type techniques. Uh, we will bring in, say, a rotation of the thumb and we'll use the energy of the tape to create that rotation, create a change in the orientation of the joint, uh, but it still allows them to have full function uh, without any limitation of movement. Okay, so in, in very simple terms, the tape is designed very differently. It has very uh, a lot of stretch in all directions, very strong recoil. We can laminate multiple layers together to give us more recoil if we desire. Um, it's designed in that way. It doesn't have an end point. So it's designed to go on in that short position and give us that, that deceleration and spring back. Okay, So most of our applications go on almost the opposite to what you would do with a kinesio application where you're putting things on in stretch. Here we're putting it on in the short position to mimic the action of the muscle, okay? And the properties of the tape allow us to do that, particularly if you're taping multiple joints or you're crossing the spine, crossing the midline, um, bringing in rotation and those sorts of things. If you don't have four-way stretch, uh, and if you don't have a lot of stretch, uh, you run out of room. Similarly, we need to take up the soft tissue tension. So often we'll be doing spiraling techniques to take up that soft tissue tension first to get a good purchase on the lever. If we just go from it's a bit like going here on my shirt. If I just go from point A to point B, I just get a lot of sliding. But if I actually wrap around, maybe a little short here, if we wrap around and take up that tension, even now, I don't get the sliding of the shirt, I get purchase on the lever, and I'm actually going to get a mechanical effect if I wind out, it's going to resist me and spring me back. Okay, so 
In order to do that, we need to have far greater uh, elongation than what you would have in a kinesia, which is designed to have a similar elasticity to the skin. We need to take up that soft tissue tension and still have uh, spring left to give us that, that reach. Okay, so in, in a lot of ways, it's based more around what we would do with our Mulligan, our McConnell uh, type of ideas. It's based on the mechanics, a lot like what you do with, with many of your rigid athletic taping uh, uh, techniques, but it's designed for a different, it's sort of the other end of the spectrum. Rather than trying to get a passive control, we're trying to get an active uh, assist, if you like. So rather than say, if we have somebody with excessive pronation, rather than blocking their navicular from dropping, what we try to do is give us a, a deceleration and then an active resupination. We also work on shortening the foot by, by using this strong elastic energy to shorten the foot, which gives us a, a raising of the transverse arch. But as well, during the actual gait cycle, we're resisting that drop, so we get a deceleration and then an active spring back into supination. So some of the, the research showing that velocity of navicular drop is also important, uh, or as important as uh, part of the problem anyway, uh, as well as the magnitude. So we want to decrease it, but we want to also decelerate it and then actively resupinate to do some of the work of those muscles that are overloaded or, or overactive. And you can see in the, in the corner here, the top picture is, is one of those type of uh, applications where we get a shortening of the foot and the raising of the arch. And some of the preliminary work on that is showing very nice changes in arch height and foot length, excuse me. <coughs> and not only that, but in some of the uh, case studies that we've done, we can also show that that is maintained over several days. Uh, and also, we actually get a, a, um, some improvement even 24 hours after removal of the tape. And that brings it around a whole lot of other questions. Is it because we're improving the length tension relationship with some of the intrinsic muscles, which have recently been shown to um, be able to actively support the arch with load? Uh, so our quadratus plantar flexors, the uterine brevis, abductor halicus, and so on. Uh, by bringing them in, into a better position over a number of days, does that then improve their function? Um, also, all of our, our passive connective tissue, if you like, our, our plantar ligaments and so on, if again we have them with less load on them for a number of days, does that then mean we get a maintenance of that arch height because we've had less creep and, and hysteresis occurring um, over a several days period, so we maintain that height afterwards. Obviously, there's uh, proprioception, kinesthetic uh, sense, and a whole range of uh, neurophysiological effects that may also account for that as well. But there are some mechanical ones, and those questions will be answered as more and more research occurs. Okay. Um, so, as I say, very similar in, in uh, our clinical reasoning methodology to what we may do with a rigid tape, uh, but we're using this actively like a second muscle to resist motion provide a reduction in, in load absorption requirements from those tissues. We're not using it neurologically necessarily, although we see very strong, uh, powerful effects in terms of circulation and, and swelling and, and bruising and those sorts of things. And we may well get uh, changes in terms of um, motor neuron excitability and, and a range of uh, uh, neurophysiological effects. But as I say, the research is a little uh, uh, sort of uh, inconclusive at this stage. We base this far more heavily on the mechanics, which is um, where there is some good evidence. As I say, we're talking about low, we're not necessarily talking about pain. Pain is a completely different thing again, but often um, if we manage low, we, we also manage pain in, in a number of cases as well. Okay. So please have a look at some of the material. Uh, there's some uh, fantastic, uh, more comprehensive course on, on MedBridge online education you can uh, get CEUs and, and so on for your, uh, for your troubles of going through that program and that goes into a number of techniques. But otherwise check out our website dynamictape.com, uh, we have uh, a number of videos and things on there as well to get you started. It is rather different, different when you apply, you have to, um, there are a few tricks of the trade if you like in terms of getting good adhesion, not creating problems with blisters and that sort of thing from, from pulling on the skin so much because we are using this mechanically to provide that force, uh, that deceleration, that recoil. So you do need to apply it correctly, um, but it's very simple once you know how, you just need to, to go over some of those videos or um, get along to one of our workshops and once you get the hang of it, you'll find it fits in very seamlessly with your clinical reasoning. It's a natural extension of what we do anyway. Somebody's weak here, I'm going to, I'm going to uh, strengthen them 
but hey, why don't I bring them into a better position into that mid-range so that they've got a better length tension relationship, they can actually recruit better, get better strengthening effect, and so on. At the same time, I'm improving their mechanics so they're getting less load and, and help to settle down their, their pain and perhaps some of those other that pain inhibitions, some of those other things that go on as well. Or functionally, you know, they're unable to do this, let's get in there and give them a give them an assist to do that. So it fits in very simply. We're already doing it with a number of our other um, I guess treatment modalities and applications, it's just as a way of augmenting that uh, and having uh, our, if you like, our manual therapy or exercise based therapy uh, reinforced for, for several days in between visits or in between sessions uh, with your patients. So uh, get along, have a look at it. As I say, it's a different uh, thing. If you want your kinesio approach, your kinesio effect, I would suggest you go for one of those products. That's what they're designed for. If you want to lock something up, I'd suggest you go for a rigid athletic tape. This is designed specifically not to lock things up. Uh, but this has a very specific purpose and it works for, very well for that purpose. So good luck with it.